Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we have been introduced to a concept of differential of the function in the previous lecture, and right now I would like to talk about the properties of differential. Now, this lecture is part of the advanced course of mathematics presented on Unizor.com. The site has not only this particular information about theory of mathematics, but also lots of uh, practical problems with solutions and also has educational functionality like enrolling for instance and uh, taking exam. The site is free so obviously uh, I encourage you to go to this website and see this video from from there. Uh, in addition every lecture has very detailed notes. Okay so properties of differential. Well obviously since differential is just a um, infinitesimal variable which is proportional to um, differential of the argument uh, with the proportionality coefficient being a derivative. Obviously all the properties of derivatives are applicable very much without change to the properties of differential, right? So, let me just repeat again the definition of differential of the function it's it's um, derivative at point x times um, a differential of the argument which is actually an increment which is converging to zero obviously this is a constant for a constant x so this one is also converging to zero and this is the coefficient proportion of proportionality between this and this which by the way justifies the notation offered by Leibniz which looks like this for a derivative. Alright, so let's just talk about properties of differential. Our first example is if my function is a linear combination of two other functions. That's multiplication. A and B are constant. G and H are two functions. Obviously, they're supposed to be smooth enough. Uh, so all the uh, derivatives and differentials exist, etc. So what is differential of f of x? Well, by definition, it's this, right? So the derivative is obviously equals to this because derivative is additive um, function and multiplied by dx, right? So that's what derivative of this linear combination is linear combination of derivatives which in turn obviously equals to a uh, derivative of g times dx would be dg of x plus b h derivative times dx would be dh of x. So as we see differential is actually as linear as derivative. That's my first property. Next is product. So f of x equals g of x times h of x. Okay. Differential of f of x is equal to um, derivative of the product, which is derivative of the first times second plus first derivative of the second, right? That's the derivative of the product times dx which means it's equal to g derivative and dx is dg of x times h of x plus g of x 
times G, uh, H derivative and uh, X is G H of X. So as we see, it looks very much like the uh, derivative of the product. So it's differential of the first times second plus second plus first times differential of the second. Next. Next is reciprocal. Okay. Differential differential of f is equal to derivative of 1 over g uh, of x. Well, um, you can actually consider this as uh, a compound function. One function is 1 over x and another function is g of x. And if it's a compound function, that you have to really use the chain rule. And the chain rule is the uh, derivative of 1 over x is 1 over minus 1 over x squared, but instead of x we go with a g squared of x times derivative of the inner function and then times gx, which is equal to this times this is differential of x divided by g squared of x. So that's the final answer. Again, obviously you expect the answer like this because you know what would be the, uh, the derivative. So all these properties of differentials are exact copies of corresponding properties of the derivative. Now what else? Compound function f of x is equal to g of h of x. Well, we just touched a little bit of compound function when we were talking about reciprocal uh, functions. So let's do it again. g f of x is equal to um, derivative of this is equal to well, it's g I will use y uh, here, assuming that y is equal to h of x, right? Times um, derivative of the inner function and y is equal to h of x. That's what uh, combination of these two functions actually is, compound function. <coughs> now I have to multiply it by dx, right? So what is the what is the result? Well, the result is g of y times, and this is differential of h of x, where y is equal to h of x. Here. Well, here it probably makes sense to. Um, exemplify it somehow. Here is for instance an example which I'm using. For instance g of x is equal to sine of x and h of x is equal to logarithm of x. So we are talking about function f of x equals to sine of logarithm of x. Well let's do first directly without this formula. Now, direct calculation of the derivative uh, of the differential in this case is derivative of this function. And again, we know that derivative is equal to derivative of the first one with an argument being the second, which is cosine of logarithm of x times the derivative of the second one, which is 1 over x, and times dx. So that's my direct calculations using definition of the differential. Okay, now how does this formula look? How does this formula look? Now g is sine, so we have a derivative, 
which is uh, from from the sine it's cosine of y y is equal to h of x which is logarithm x times differential of this function logarithm the differential of the logarithm is its derivative which is 1 over x times dx so we have exactly the same thing to be expected obviously okay now based on this we can uh, derive um, di uh, differentials of the functions which are implicitly defined let me just make an example a very simple example let's just assume for a second that we don't know uh, what is the uh, what is the derivative of logarithm x I would like to derive it using implicit methodology, right? So what can I say about this? That I know the definition of the logarithm is e to the power of logarithm uh, x is equal to x, right? That's the definition of the logarithm. It's a power which I have to raise the base of this logarithm, which is number e, to get the argument of the logarithm. Now this I can actually consider as a compound function. So f of x is equal to e to the power of logarithm x. So my g of x is equal to e power x and uh, h of x is equal to logarithm x. Right? So the combination of these two this one is an inner function and this is an outer function gives me this so let's just use uh, the uh, the rules for compound functions so if these are equal to each other then that means their differentials are supposed to be equal to each other well on the right I have dx obviously right so what's on the left what is my differential of this function well, differential of this function is equal to um, the derivative of the outer function uh, with an argument being the inner function, which is logarithm x. Derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x, right? So uh, uh, instead of argument x, I have to substitute my inner function. And then um, differential of logarithm x. And this is supposed to be equal to dx, right? Now, what is this? e to the power of logarithm x is x, right? That's the definition of the logarithm, from which follows that differential of logarithm x is equal to dx divided by x, which is exactly the same thing as if we will do a derivative of logarithm x, which we kind of pretended that we don't know but actually it is 1 over x times differential of x so it's exactly the same thing so that's how we can find um, the differential implicitly using the compound functions so this is basically a very simple lecture because all the properties of the differential are mirror image of uh, properties of derivative because differential is a derivative times dx basically that's it um, so I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com and um, other than that uh, that's it thanks very much good luck <laughs>